up, soldiers. While we're out here, you will be taking all commands from the tower. And I am the tower. Do you understand? Yes, sir! Welcome to the Tower, your dose of military news delivered with an infernal edge. My name is Magister Campbell, and today we are discussing the U.S. military pinned down by Republican fire on wokeness. Now, this is from Barons.com, and it's written by Frankie Taggart on July 13, 2023. When the U.S. Army released a recruitment ad showcasing a female soldier who had been raised by two mothers... Liberals saw military leadership comfortable in its own skin and strengthened by the diversity in its ranks. But conservatives cringed at what they perceived to be a woke fighting force, weakened by effete generals with a liberal political agenda and a compulsion to virtue signal at the expense of combat readiness. Quote, Holy crap! <laughs> U.S. Senator Ted Cruz said in a tweet, reposting a video contrasting the 2021 commercial with images of a macho, shaven-headed Russian warrior, sinuous arms bulging as he performed push-ups and fired his weapon. Quote, Perhaps a woke, emasculated military is not the best idea, ventured Cruz before blasting Democrats and the media for trying to turn U.S. troops into pansies. The 52-year-old Texan, who has also dismissed proposals to allow women to serve in combat roles as nuts, is not alone in his ire. The clarion call over wokeness in the military has galvanized right-wingers nostalgic for an era before public life was hijacked, as they see it, by authoritarian progressives seeking to force leftist values on Americans. Republican lawmakers, who took control of the House of Representatives this year, have been locked in a war with Pentagon leaders they accuse of being overly fixated on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Racial justice education and an obsession with climate change have made the troops go soft, they complain, driving a recruitment slump that has worsened under President Joe Biden. This disdain for military leadership has seeped into the Republican grassroots from Donald Trump, who has given multiple speeches since leaving office, railing on, quote, weak and ineffective generals, more concerned with political correctness than fighting their enemies. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Trump's main rival for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, has claimed that China is laughing over a supposed fixation with pronouns in U.S. military leadership. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin got into a shouting match in the House last year as a far-right congressman accused the former four-star general of allowing the Pentagon to embrace socialism with mandatory pronoun training. The examples of this kind of criticism are legion and damage U.S. security, according to Milwaukee-based political analyst Risa Brooks, who argues that the attacks are often absurdly vague or rely on facts that turn out to be untrue. Quote, They undermine the military's internal cohesion, public oversight, and distract Congress and the American people from serious national security problems, all while addressing a problem that is poorly defined and mostly unsubstantiated, the Marquette University professor wrote in a recent commentary. Those who have long seen these attacks for what they are, more performative partisanship than substantive critiques for real problems, should do more to counter them effectively. The main event roiling Washington this week has been the Pentagon's budget, enacted with cross-party support every year since the early 1960s and usually without drama. Under its new Republican leadership, however, the bitterly divided House is using its power over the purse strings to focus on wokeism in the military and force policy changes. Lawmakers have been debating dozens of amendments to the $886 billion defense policy bill on so-called culture war topics, from abortion policy, COVID-19 vaccines, and racial diversity to medical treatment of transgender troops. There are proposals to block or reduce military aid to Ukraine, end the removal of Confederate names from bases, and defy White House climate edicts, and others that have nothing to do with the armed forces. There's no chance of the bill getting through the Democratic-led Senate with the conservative provisions intact, but compromise will be required to get some kind of package to Biden's desk to keep the military funded. Meanwhile, the normally stoic military brass has begun pushing back, putting their top officers armed with cold, hard facts that refute some of the more political attacks targeting them. Army Sergeant Major Michael Grinston told Republican lawmakers in March that a fraction of the hours the military spends on training are devoted to equality. Quote, When I look at it, there is one hour of equal opportunity training and basic training and 92 hours of rifle marksmanship training, he said. 
Chief Master Sergeant Joanne Bass was asked about pronoun training in the Air Force recently and had to explain that there is no such thing. And Marine Corps Commandant General David Berger said in a public forum in December, wokeism was not a big concern among the rank and file. Quote, I don't see it. I don't hear it. They're not talking about it, he told Reagan National Defense Forum. All right, so here's my thought. First and foremost, this is just partisan theater. That's all this is. Republicans are doing everything they can to make sure their donors see them as fighting for the conservative rights. Fighting in a, a, a world where conservatism is, is being pushed down by the liberal communist agenda. It's all lies. But that's what their donors want to see, and so these puppets have to dance their little marionette asses to those strings. So before we talk about this, let's just define woke, because everyone seems to pretend it means something that it really doesn't. Merriam-Webster's definition of woke is aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues, especially issues of race and social justice. That's it. It's being aware of social issues. That's it. It is not maneuvering political bodies, manufacturing law. It's not changing anything. It's just being aware that there are actual racial and social issues in our world. That's it. So all of you assholes out there who are complaining that wokeism is taking over America... You sound like the assholes that you actually are. Not only are you stupid, and I would say ignorant, if you weren't already informed by multiple people in different areas what woke actually means. They, they use it as if it's some sort of bullet they can attack their enemies with and murder them. Oh, they're woke! No. It shows you of being the ignorant asshole that you actually are. Every single one of you. And everyone listening to this, if you're in their keyboard warrior typing on your social media page about, oh, wokeism is destroying America, you're an idiot as well. Okay, so now that we understand the actual definition of what woke is, no commercial changes policy. Do you understand that? If there is a commercial that represents a portion of the community that the military is trying to target, saying, hey, you also can serve your country, that does not mean that that is the only group that they ever talk to. They're simply trying to get bodies. That's it. As soon as you understand that, then you realize that, oh yeah, I guess the military is very much like any other recruitment corporation. They want to target people to look at their product, which is military service, as favorable. And so they need to target people who are right now not interested in serving their country. That's it. They're selling a product. So they have to speak to the people that they're targeting. It's called demographics. All right. So the commercial does not dictate policy first and foremost. And the quote virtue signal at the expense of combat preparedness is a complete red herring. It has nothing to do with each other. Virtue signaling, I agree, is annoying as shit and people suck, whether they're on the right, the left, in between, or on extremes. Virtue signaling is something people do when they have no substance to themselves. However, you cannot virtue signal at the expense of combat preparedness. It doesn't even logically make sense. Combat preparedness means training, preparing equipment, going over battle plans, it has everything to do with actual action. Virtue signaling is you being an asshole saying, hey, I stand for conservative rights. Damn the woke agenda. That's virtue signaling. But even that that I'm against has nothing to do with combat preparedness. So Ted Cruz says that this is somehow emasculating our leadership and emasculating our country. Ironic coming from Ted Cruz, who was emasculated by his great MAGA leader over and over and over again. He has this backward thought process, which is poison to rational thinking, that somehow anyone except for men cannot serve in combat roles. That's Ted Cruz's perspective. Well, guess what, Ted Cruz? 
there are men who are pussies, who are bitches, who are incapable of standing up and fighting. Some of them are in the military, and I would argue you're one of them. Now, just because you're a dude does not mean that you're ready for combat or ready to kill someone or die for your country. So if there are other people out there, whether they're trans, gay, queer, you fill in the nomenclature that you hate. And they're willing to stand up, fight, and in worst case scenario, die for their country? You should be welcoming them with open arms, especially... When you then, on the next side of your fucking face, complain that we don't have enough people coming into the military. You're pushing them out, you dumbass. Give them an opportunity to serve, and people will serve. That's how this thing works. So the right-wing ideas of public life has been hijacked, as they see it, by authoritarian progressives seeking to force leftist values on Americans. And they're not entirely wrong. And look, I, I am not a right-wing person. Far from it. But the left has really sort of gone off the fucking... They've, they've jumped the shark. Like, you can't, you can't pretend like there aren't groups in the left that take their, their uh, progressive talking points into militant areas. E equally on the right. And so it's not like this, this side does it, that side doesn't. But you do have to recognize that... If there was no political agenda by leftist groups in order to sway public opinion, then the right wouldn't be reacting this way. So yes, they do exist. Yes, pronouns, in my opinion, are virtue signaling. If you come and meet me for the first time, say, hi, my name is X or Y. You don't have to say, hi, my name is X or Y and my pronouns are X or Y. No. That tells me that you're a virtue signaling asshole. You tell me what you want me to call you, and I will call you that. If I make a mistake because I assume you're one gender over the other, simply based on experience and uh, appearance, correct me, and I will adjust fire. That's all. You say, no, 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 she. I'll say, okay, she, her. It doesn't matter. But don't stand up and open with that. It's the same as if you came up and said uh, any of your political opinions. Hi, my name is X. I stand for the right of blah, blah, blah. No, that means you're an asshole. <laughs> so it does. I understand why the right is freaking out. First of all, the right is freaking out because their old ideas of suppressing portions of this country, the population, are now out of style. The whole sudden strategy, the whole racism and bigotry, that's all going the way of the dodo, and they're terrified because that's the bread and butter of the Republican Party, and it always has been. You can't argue that. So yes, they're getting afraid because they're losing in the global political social sphere. But the problem is, is that they're thinking of it as losing rather than, oh, we just have to adapt to the time that we're living in. You can't live in a modern age and use Stone Age technology. You can't live in a modern age and use Stone Age medical uh, concepts uh, using leeches rather than uh, uh, antibiotics. You have to adapt to the time that you're living in. That's the benefit of living in modern times, is that you learn from the mistakes of the past and enjoy reaping the benefits of the advancements of the past. Simply because someone likes to fuck whoever they want to fuck and likes to be identified however the fuck they want to be identified and may or may not want to serve in the military has nothing to do with politics. Except for when the Republicans bring it into the political sphere and actively stop progress so that they can show their donors, Hey, look at me! I'm a defender of conservatism! You're an asshole. All right. So it is possible the public's lack of faith in the military is not due to wokeism. It's possible that it's due to the right wing constantly condemning the military every single opportunity they get. We have an ex-president, Donald Trump, 
who is actively in speeches all the time talking shit about the military. Do you think the reason why people don't like the military nowadays or don't want to join it is more because you are constantly saying how horrible and stupid and failing and, and losers they are? Maybe that has some impact on whether or not people want to join it. Because again, we live in a time, as we always have, arguably, it just seems to be a little more heightened lately, where you have to take a side. I'm in this camp and you're in that camp and we cannot meet in the middle. We must fight! Right? That's exactly what people do when it comes to the idea of joining the military or not. What does my side think about me engaging in X or Y activity? Should I go to a rally? Well, I don't know. My, my side doesn't like that rally or that, that, that cause. I, I should stay home and not, not be a part of it. Or maybe I should go and, and protest that rally. Should I join the military? Oh, I don't know. My side doesn't really like it. Uh, I don't want to be out on my side. Uh, I'll just uh, not join the military. Those are ridiculous talking points, but those are actual thoughts that run through the fucking herd's mind. I'm hoping no one listening to this has that running through their mind. But it's out there. It's real. So this is nothing but political theater intended to distract Americans from Congress's inability to do anything substantive for their constituents, i.e. the American people. Do you ever wonder why there's always a new cause du jour to rail against? Isn't that weird? When nothing is actually being done to help the American people, rather than us standing up and fighting and arguing, demanding that Congress do something to improve our lives, instead of doing that, we're focusing on the military training woke ideology. Which doesn't happen, there's zero evidence, but hey, as long as there's congressmen shouting about it, well, let's talk about it. It's an echo chamber of idiocy. And I want nothing to do with it. All right, soldiers, that's all I have for you today. Comedy, I can hoot!